Is there a difference between the verses that talk about inheriting the kingdom of God and entering the kingdom of God? Welcome to our weekly Q&A in relation to our study through the Bible series in community here on YouTube. And so if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And there's going to be an announcement at the end of this video that's going to pertain to major two major changes to this channel in the future. So go ahead and stay tuned so you don't miss those announcements, particularly as it pertains to our study through the Bible material here on YouTube. And so I just want to give a shout out before we get started to our new likes on Facebook, Ronnie Burns and Vicky Stevenson, and then also our new subscriber, Divide the Word Blog. And um, so let's go ahead and jump in. We only have one really major question this week uh, that I wanted to get into. And here it goes. It says, the inherit argument, and this has to do with comments that I made about the question that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, the verses pertaining to homosexuality, the verses had to do a lot of them with those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I made the comment that this is not saying that they have lost their salvation or that they don't have salvation, but is saying that they will not inherit, that they're, when it comes to ruling and reigning with Christ, when it comes to... Um, crowns and rewards and language of that nature, that they will not be partaking of those things. And I mentioned that there's a difference if you look at the verses that say, enter the kingdom of God, and those who say, inherit the kingdom of God. There is an inherent difference there. But I'm going to go ahead and read the question in totality, and then we'll dive into it from there. The inherit argument seems flimsy. I've heard you say that on your podcast, and I couldn't understand how you came to that conclusion. Inherit is synonymous with our promises of salvation all throughout the scriptures, Ephesians 3, 6, Romans 8, 17, and Colossians 1, 12, and tons more all conflate inheritance with salvation, yet I know that grace is the only answer. It is impossible to be good enough. I've always assumed that this verse meant that if you live in these sins and have no intention of giving them up after you have given your life to Christ, then you weren't really saved. They went out, okay, and that's 1 John 2.19 is what he cites. You didn't really give your life to Christ. You kept it to yourself. You decided to do it your own way. I'm not saying this change has to be instant, but the change must occur, not for salvation, but as evidence of salvation. That's always been my understanding of this passage. I want to be wrong. And so, I just to help you understand where this uh, came from, is that when I was living in Utah, we were missionaries to the LDS people. Uh, my wife, as we were studying grace uh, really intensely, my wife asked me a really important question, and I talk about it in the book, and the whole concept of stunted grace that I discuss in my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. Um, when I talk about the whole concept, it came from a question that she had. And she, the ver it was in relation to the verses that talk about inheritance and talk about ruling and reigning with Christ and talk about crowns and rewards. And she said, how does grace factor in to those things? How is that not works that are earning those things for us. And that sent me, at first I got really irritated with her um, because I was <laughs> really in a different place spiritually and maturity wise. I uh, didn't know how to handle questions or opposition or really it was an insecurity because I didn't know the answer. And it sent me in a search through the Bible. And I just started tearing through the New Testament and the verses that related to what she was talking about. And what the Lord showed me is uh, that it showed me that even those things, uh, all of them, rewards, crowns, inheritance, ruling, reigning with Christ, when they are mentioned, they are mentioned in the context of uh, the language of gift and grace. And so some examples, when Paul talks about the judgment seat of Christ and where our works are going to be tried in fire, and some will be wood, hay, and stubble, and some will be gold, silver, and precious stones, he says that there will be some who suffer loss. Well, it's hard to lose something that you didn't already have. 
or at least didn't have access to. Jesus, when he talked about the Pharisees, and he says, don't be like them because they do these things to be seen by men, and they blow their trumpets on the street corners. And it says in your English translations, they have uh, received their reward. They have already received their reward. In the Greek, it actually says they have held back or they have abstained from their reward. And so there was something that was offered for, to them, but they simply did not receive what was offered to them in the same way that salvation was. Uh, Paul advises Timothy, don't let anybody take your crown. And um, he says of himself, there is a crown laid up for me. And so all of that language is put in the context of gift. And in fact, even the kingdom uh, message is that is there's verses in which he says the father's desire is to give you the kingdom and then it also says on the flip side the kingdom of god must be received so it is a, a gift that god desires to give his children and what i notice is that the verses that you cited uh, don't directly say that uh, salvation is linked with inheritance. It, it, it more introduces the same concept. Ephesians 3, 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And so, yes, God's intention is for his children to be heirs, joint heirs with Christ. But God's intention, his desire, his will is not always met. Okay, an example, it says that God desires everybody to come to repentance and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But we know that that is not going to happen. God's will does not always represent what actually will happen. God's intention is for his children to be also heirs. But that doesn't mean that all of them will. And so Romans 8, 17, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so, be so that we suffer with him, that we may all be glorified together. So in here, you have a condition in which you say, you have that word, if, if it so be that we suffer with him. And, and so that's where the crowns and all of that, it is conditional, okay? And, and the condition is really, uh, the language is tempting to see it in, in light of, okay, well, we have to do something. We have to earn it. We have to work for it. But that's not really what it's saying, okay? If you are you have a life in which you are willing to receive everything that God wants to give you, then you are naturally going to suffer with him, okay? And you're going to be living a life that's selfless, and you're going to be living a life that is um, honoring him is going to, like you said, desire to put away certain sins and be obedient, and allow him to sanctify you, allow him to use you, uh, and allow him to make you fruitful. But that does not mean that those who are not those things are not children of God, or that, you know, like if we don't do enough, or if we don't get rid of our sins fast enough, or if we, you know, have certain sins in our life that we're not a child of God anymore, or that we lose our salvation, or it means that we weren't ever to begin with. Um, and so then Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And so he has made us me, he, he's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. He, he has not held black. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. But that does not mean that any one of us are without sin. And that's where I found your reasoning. Uh, and you are bringing up the same issue that my wife brought up to me and that I realize is an issue that the way that we describe this whole ruling and reigning with Christ or the rewards as Christians doesn't sound a whole lot different than the, the multiple levels of heaven or, you know, whatever uh, that these other groups that LDS or is particularly put uh, or the way they would describe it. The way most Christians describe this end and the part of salvation isn't very much different. And so it made me realize that that was the problem. And you, it sounds like you realize what the problem is too. Um, you just haven't 
really, I, I think, exhaustively really looked into this and studied it and, and found that, that it's the language of grace and a person, a believer, is able to receive uh, what they're willing and able to receive is what we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ with, and that's going to be representative. And I was just sharing, I, and the other end of this is, I call it desire, motive, and power. Okay, so if uh, you take any desire, like to, you, since sin seems to be an issue, you know, getting rid of sin, which none of us have successfully gotten rid of all of our sins. So are we talking about certain sins that we have to get rid of, but other sins are okay? Because it also puts liars and coveting on the same list as those who don't inherit the kingdom. Does that mean that if those who lie or those who covet aren't part of the kingdom of God? Or maybe how about gluttons? Or, or things of that nature. Um, none of us have been without sin or reach a point where we, or we are without sin. And so to say that certain sins mean that we aren't saved is inconsistent. And um, so when a person claims works righteousness, I take them through these questions and I ask them, it, it, the desire to do good, where does that come from? Is that something that you muster up within yourself, or is that something that comes from somewhere else? And they say, okay, well, that they have to admit that that comes from God. He gives you the desires of your heart. Then you get to motive. Okay, well, we can do things to please other people. We can do things for our own self glorification, or we can do the, you know we can do things grudgingly. Um, or we can be a cheerful giver, like Paul says, or like he says, the love of Christ compels us. So, well, if you do things because you love God and because you love his people, where does that come from? Is that something that you somehow mustered up for yourself? No, it comes from God. And then the power to do those things, to carry out those things that you want to do and you desire to do and you have this idea to do, where does that come from? Well, Jesus is the source of our power, and he also gives us the physical ability to choose, to, to say no to temptation, to say yes to serving him in his will. And then he gives us the physical ability to carry those out. And all of that it, it says in, in the Greek in Ephesians 6.10. Um, and so with all of that said, any good thing that you've done or any sin that you've gotten yourself rid of, it, it, where did that come from? That comes from you being willing to allow Christ to live his life out through you. And so my, all I'm saying is that, that when we stand before Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, the reward, the beam of seat of Christ, then those things that fit in that trajectory, the things that we've done in his his desire, in his motive, in his power, those are the things that become gold, silver, and precious stones. And so, in a very real way, you could say that the only thing that gets into heaven is Jesus. And um, so, that's basically my feeling on it. And so, the the sins that we hold on to, uh, the things that we do for our own glory, the the things that we're not willing to receive that He wants to give us. Those all have a reflection. Those all have consequences in the kingdom. And they all affect the whole concept of crowns and rewards and really reigning with Christ. But it's in the language of gift and what you have and haven't received and why. That, that is what determines it. And so I hope that helps. If you have any follow-up questions, please let me know. Um, and so then going on, the other, other comment is uh, somehow... Uh, YouTube, and this is another reason why I'm changing uh, the channel up, and I'm going to get to that announcement at, at the end. Um, it's not sending notifications out all the time with all videos to even to people who click on that notifications bell. And uh, so that's a problem. And YouTube, it seems to really, even if you tell it how to behave, um, what it listens to more is what you are watching. Uh and even specific to different devices that you watch YouTube on, it's paying attention to do you watch shorter videos or do you watch longer videos on this device? And, uh, you know, in pertaining to this channel, like, do you watch Bible videos or do you watch cult videos? Or do you watch videos that are pertaining to a specific area or a specific group or a specific topic? And, you know, and they put all that together. And so that's why, even if you notice that you go on a device, um, 
your mobile device and it'll recommend different videos for you uh, than if you go on your TV and try to watch YouTube. And so that that's what's going on. And so just know that YouTube is squirrely and check pack with the channel uh, just to make sure you haven't missed anything. Uh, the best thing you can do is subscribe and then um, you can just click on the, the you know people with a free gift link on the side of your, your video. Or the one thing that I do with my subscriptions is I just click on the subscriptions window and then all the videos in order of the last one that's been posted show up of all the people that I've subscribed to. So, I mean, that might be hard if you're one of those people that subscribe to like a hundred or a thousand channels. Then, you know, YouTube is probably... Um, it's thinking if you click on notifications for a lot of them or all of them, it's probably thinking, oh, it's way too much. And so and that might be part of it too. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how YouTube works and how to you know, bust past the, the growth barriers that I've been in. Uh, so anyway, that, that if you had that question or questions about YouTube in general, there you go. And then um, also... I, he commented, uh, all of this sounds familiar. Is this the second upload of the same video? I think I commented on the inheritance issue. And um, so the answer is uh, the I posted the weekly discussion video last week. And because there was a whole section that focused on homosexuality, I thought that's specific enough to where I just edited out that portion and released it as, as its own video. And so, yes, it was the homosexuality one was a portion of the, the bigger weekly discussion questions. But I wanted you know a video if people were searching on YouTube uh, under that topic that they'd be able to find it specifically. And so, yes, uh, sometimes I do that. If I'm talking, like even in these videos, if I'm talking about a specific thing and there's, there's another big issue that was asked about, I might isolate that um, and uh, use it as its own separate video for that same purpose. So I hope that answers all your questions. If you have insights or comments to something that I didn't talk about today, then go ahead and put that in the comments down below and I'll be using some for next week's weekly Q&A. But on that note, here's the announcements that I was talking about um, at the end of the video. We are making two big changes to the study through the Bible material that have been on this channel on People the Free Gift channel. I'm not going to delete any of the videos that are pre-existing uh, having to do with study through the Bible or any of my content through the Bible. I made that mistake last year and then found out later that's probably one of the worst things you can possibly do to your channel. The other thing I found out is that um, what I did do is I took all of those videos, the study through the Bible, the daily ones, and I've put them onto this other channel which is called study through the Bible. And um, that allows people who like my Bible content to go to one place and then the people who like my uh, Colts content to go to one place. I'm finding that one problem with YouTube is that um, if you're not super specific and niche oriented, um, then you're, it's not going to let anybody know about any of your videos because it's like, I don't know what to do. And then I had people that liked the Bible content but don't like the Colts content, and so they'll subscribe and then unsubscribe. And then the people who like the Colts content and don't like the Bible content, or because they're skipping over all those other videos in between, then they don't get notified or that you know they don't know when I'm making new videos and then it's too late and then they've already kind of drifted off from my channel. And so I make putting all that onto it and I'm gonna put a link at the end screen and the cards and the description down below to that other channel that's already live, already has all the other videos uploaded and I'm gonna put this one on there as well very soon. And I'm gonna be putting you know past sermon content uh, on that channel, I'm going to, you know, all the videos I took off before that it was just, you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, the, the daily videos and the weekly videos and the Q&A. But that goes me to second change. And that is I've been putting out daily videos dealing with the daily assignments. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate those. And so the next week's uh, assignments I'm going to put in the description on this video in case you missed it on the sermon video that I did um, that I just released as well 
and uh, that will give you next week's assignments. And so then you're going to go to that other channel and you're going to find uh, next week I'm going to be putting out the summary video on the content that you've been talking about there. And then we'll just keep on going on that channel and I won't be having any more Bible videos on this channel. So if you have questions about all the content or, or where to find it, you know, feel free to put it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to give you the link over there. But that's just to separate the two channels, the two niches that I deal in here on YouTube, completely separate from each other. And, you know, who knows, maybe when I have more time down the road, maybe the whole Star Wars and philosophy thing will be reborn on a separate channel under that name. Uh, but uh, that is all for now. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content for today. And share this video with others who want to study the Bible for themselves. Give them the resources they need and the answers to the questions that they have. And let's do it in community here on YouTube. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.